Hello students, once again welcome to our channel Fizzy Dive and this is your teacher Alexi Rajan. Today we are going to study about a very important topic of class 10 that is a refraction of light. So here we are going to study about the various aspects of refraction of light. So without wasting time, we'll dive straight to the class. So to the class, a reflection of light. So what was reflection of light? It is the bouncing back of light rays once it comes and falls on any surface and then it bounces back and we call it as what? Reflection of light. But what is in the case of refraction? So here comes the idea of interface. Interface is a demarcation boundary between two mediums, that is medium one and medium two. Just imagine that this is air and this is water. So here comes the idea of refraction. So in this case, you can see that this water is not an opaque object. Whereas in the case of reflection, you can see the surface is an opaque. So there is no way for the light to move inside, right? But in the case of refraction, we are studying about the passage of light or the movement of light between two mediums and that too, uh, which allows the light to pass through. So in this case, you can see if a light ray is coming and falling from air to water, then what happens there? You can see that the light ray will be moving like this, right? It won't happen like the light rays move in a straight line like this. Instead, you can see a phenomenon, a wonderful phenomenon where you can see if I'm drawing a normal here, then you can see instead of moving this way, the light will just bend and move like this. So there occurs a bending of light here. In this, you clearly observe there, there you can see the light ray is falling, the falling like this, the light ray is falling like this and then you can see at this interface the light ray bent towards the normal instead of moving in a straight line. So refraction is the bending of light ray once it just falls from one medium to another medium. Just imagine that there is an interface between medium 1 and medium Two. This is medium 1 and medium 2. Imagine a light ray from a source is moving, moving from one medium to another medium or medium 1 to medium 2. There at the interface by the definition you know that it will just bend like this, right? It is not necessary that the bending should be closer to the normal. It can be away from the normal also. But one thing is sure that it will bend and we call it as what? A refraction of light and this ray is known as the incident ray. This ray is known as as it is refracting so we can say it is a refracted ray and the perpendicular line drawn to the interface the normal it is not normal ray it is normal and the angle between the normal and the incident ray is known as what angle of incidence and it can be represented as angle i or theta i angle between the refracted ray and the normal is known as angle of refraction. So these are the various terms that you need to study while studying this refraction process. So why this refraction process is happening? So as a physics student, as a science student, there should be a why question in, our, in your mind. Then only that scientific temper will come and we'll excel in our scientific ideas. There is an interface between medium 1 and medium 2. In 12th standard, you will study that the light is not passing as a ray. Instead, it is passing like a wavefront or simply if I'm just taking a point source. Let us imagine that this is point source A. If I switch on this point source, light waves will be moving like this. Light waves will be moving like this. You can see it will propagate like this in form of circles and we call this portion as wave front. The distance between this two wave fronts is known as what? Wave length and this simple portion, the single portion is known as wave front. A very important property of light comes here that is light will pass through any medium and it will have different different speeds in different different medium. It is not that light is always having the speed of 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. This speed is 
in back air and vacuum have almost near uh, near so it is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second that is approximate actually it is 2.9 something the light speed is not same in all medium that means once the light enters into any medium for example water then definitely the speed of light will reduce once it comes to in a oil then then also it reduce once it pass by through glass then also it will reduce why because they are in different different medium so the actual reason for the refraction process is due to the speed difference or the velocity difference of light in different different medium so you can see in the screen that is the actual reason for the bending of light the light is moving like this and the, in the form of a wave front you can see the wave front is moving like this so let this be air and especially note that let this be water the speed of light in air or vacuum is maximum till now in future we don't know whether we will find any other mediums where the light speed is maximum more than this air and back as the wave front enters from one medium that is this is medium one and this is medium two there you can see that this portion enters partially to the second medium so definitely what will happen it will reduce the velocity or speed as a result what happens is a bending takes place a portion of wave front enters to the other medium so suddenly what will happen the bending takes place as you can see that thing in the assembly and all if you are taking a curve the army army officials during march pass and all you can see if you want to turn the curve if three army officials are there then the person at the outer boundary he need to increase a bit speed than the person or the army official who is standing to the inner curve so if this is a curve then obviously this person need to increase its velocity then only they can maintain this line light rays enters to the other medium and they take a shift there and one more thing is there here you can see here the wavelength is this much but as soon as it enters the wavelength decreases there the wavelength decreases there due to the variation in speed due to the variation in speed the wavelength also decreases there and there is one very important equation that is v is equal to new lambda or frequency into wavelength where lambda is the representation of wavelength nu or f nu is the symbol is a representation of frequency and frequency has nothing to do with the medium so frequency will remain same so there is no change for frequency so as a result you can see that as the velocity decreases the wavelength also decreases there as frequency is a constant you can say velocity is directly proportional to the wavelength in this case a bending of light takes place if i am drawing a normal here you can see a refracted ray is bent towards the normal and here comes an another inference out of this particular portion okay i am taking two conditions and here it is from air to water and the second condition it is from water to air in this case you can see that the first case we can see that we are drawing a normal here and in the first case the light ray is moving from air to water so here you can see the refracted ray will move towards the normal whereas in the second case if i am drawing a normal here you can see when once the light ray passes from water to air it moves away from the normal if there was no difference in medium then the light ray would have gone straight instead of going straight it moved towards the normal here instead of moving straight the light ray is moving away from the normal so what happens there we call this air medium as a rarer medium and this as denser medium and here it is a denser medium and this one is a rarer medium it is not necessary that air air will always be rarer medium that instead of air and air if i am taking glass and instead of water i am taking glass how we can find out the rarer and denser medium that can be explained after some time by after studying the very important term that is uh, that you will study in the case of uh, while you study the snell's law so till then wait and then we once again we will come back to the same session okay so here this is a simple inference if the light ray is moving from air to water then it will move or air to any other medium then it will move towards the normal 
that is rare if it is if light is moving from rarer to denser then it will the light rays or refracted ray will move towards the normal once it is moving from denser to rarer the light ray will move away from the normal away from the normal okay now we are going to study about the laws of uh, refraction there so before studying laws of refraction we need to study a very important term that is refractive index or index of refraction we call it some so what is the definition of a refractive index refractive index is defined or denoted by n term n small letter n a refractive index is defined as the ratio of speed of light in vacuum which is repre represented by c to the velocity of light in any medium for which we are going to find out the refractive index for example if i want to find out the refractive index of water then i will study i will i will find out the refractive index of water by taking the velocity of light in vacuum and light in water then i will just divide it by c by v and then i will get a value and that value is what the refractive index of water in uh, precisely we will study the different types of refractive index in the coming classes and there you will uh, get it more clear and here the first law of a refraction is same as that of the laws of a reflection now you just turn back those who haven't seen the reflection process and reflection chapter i will just pin somewhere here the link for that particular video and you just go through and see that value also that that video also so now the first law instead of reflection you change it to a refraction simply what is the first law the incident ray refracted ray and the normal lies on same plane so in the reflection chapter we had seen the incident ray reflected ray and the normal lies on the same plane instead here in this case the incident ray refracted ray and the normal lies on the same plane so here you can see the reflected the incident ray the reflect refracted ray and the normal are lying all the three are lying on the same plane now, the second law states that it is something about the refractive index so actually we can say the sign of angle of incidence or theta i i will just take theta i to sign of angle of refraction the ratio of sign of angle of incidence to sign of angle of refraction is equal to a constant and that constant is nothing but it is a refractive index so this is the case en1 or ni <coughs> n1 where this is n1 and this is n2 if two mediums are taken generalized way we can say n1 sin theta i is equal to n2 sin theta r this is the actual equation n1 sin theta i is equal to n2 sin theta r so here what happens is sin theta i by sin theta r is equal to what n2 divided by n1 whereas n1 is the refractive index of index of air or vacuum and the refractive index of air or vacuum is nothing but it is 1 it is the value is 1 so what happens there this will vanish and you will get n2 right so n2 is equal to sin theta i by sin theta r and n2 is what this medium this medium right so it is nothing so instead of writing this 2 i have just written n only so that's how you are getting this particular equation that is sin theta i by sin theta r is equal to n refractive index of the medium this law is known as the snell's law it is very 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 important so you may get a question on snell's law for sure so let us see some real life experiment on the refraction process so here is a real life experiment if i'm just going to just dip this pencil there is nothing so there is only air present there so there is no change of shape in pencil so i need to bend this pencil or i need to break this pencil by using simple physics magic so how we can do that thing abracadabra here comes the water yes now just closely see the pencil has bent from this way to this way in the previous case there was no change in the shape of pencil but now you can see you had bent the pencil without any further folds or without any strength simply using physics magic 
you have bent the pencil or you had broken the broken the friend pencil there so this is the refraction the magic of refraction we have seen a real life experiment here right so we are going to study how it happens how the the, the pencil bent once it enters to the glass here in this case you can say okay i am just taking a glass of water okay glass of water there there i had dipped the pen right this is the case i had dipped the pen and i am just looking from this side right this is my eyes i'm just taking this particular point the end point so imagine that from this end point the ray of light is coming okay two ray of light coming as you know the light is moving from water to air so obviously what will happen it will bend away from the normal right so it is just moving like this it is bending like this it reaches my eyes but my eyes have the property of seeing it straight so that is i will see that this light ray will just move 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 and here also it will just move move and meet somewhere here that is if this is point a then this a will be seen at this particular point a dash the pen is like this and this is a point a and this point a will be shifted somewhere here a dash that is from this interface you can see the the point the pen will be like this the pen will be like this there is a bending occurs there this is how the pen bends once it enters from air to the water or you can see like that in the video if i am just taking a glass of water and if i am placing a coin here at the bottom then this coin is raised a bit why it is so why because if i am just taking a ray of light from this particular coin then you can see this ray of light burns at point whenever two reflected rays are meeting at that particular point what will be formed the image will be formed of the object this object's image will be formed there that is the coin will be raised a bit this is why while fishing and all you can see that the fish will be actually floating somewhat deeper but you will see that the fish is at the surface so if you try to catch the fish you will not be able to catch the fish you need to know about physics then only you can correctly hunt or you can just catch the fish this is uh, in previous in in uh, some tribe tribes and all they used to catch the fish if you are seeing the national geography and all they used to catch the fish by using the sphere and they need to know that the fish is moving somewhat deeper but it seems that the fish is actually somewhere at the surface and if you are trying to catch the fish by what by using that particular technique then you will not get the fish at any cost but if you are seeing that okay if the fish appears somewhat higher then obviously you need to send the sphere like this and then you need to catch the fish so that's all for today's class i hope that you got the points we need your support in the form of your like share comment and subscription and we will come in the next class with new and very important topics for your board exams till then bye and have a nice day goodbye